Our reading today is the familiar story of several fearful disciples and Jesus in a boat and what happens when they experience rough weather together. Within this story, we get a glimpse of Jesus' humanity being physically tired and needing to rest, and his divinity by calming the storm with three simple words. We also see the disciples question Jesus' faithfulness, though they have been with him for a while and have heard his teaching and witnessed his miracles. How often are we like the disciples when we face the storms of life? Mark 4, chapter 35 to 41, page 36 in the New Testament. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. And he said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Holy words for God's people. Amen. God, in these next few moments, please open our ears, our hearts, our minds to what you would have for us. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This past winter, I took a scripture class on the church calendar, which was essentially learning how to use the lectionary to prepare sermons and studies for a certain period within the church year. For those of you not familiar with the lectionary, it is a three-year cycle of selected Bible readings which correspond to church seasons like Advent, Lent, Eastertide, and Holy Days like Christmas and Easter and Pentecost, as well as all of the Sundays in between. These in-between Sundays are also known as Ordinary Time. Reading through the entire cycle results in a congregation or individual going through a huge amount of the Bible. On each Sunday, there is a passage from the Psalms, Old Testament, Gospels, and New Testament. Sometimes it seems quite obvious why the selected passages were put together. Other times, leave the reader with more questions than they had to start with. Some churches use the lectionary every week on Sunday mornings rather than do a particular sermon series like we often do here. Today, our gospel reading comes from the lectionary for this specific Sunday. It feels important to tell you this so that you know the stormy situation in which the disciples find themselves in Mark chapter 4 is made even more poignant when put next to today's Old Testament reading from 1 Samuel, the story of David and Goliath, and the reading, the New Testament reading from 2 Corinthians 6, when the Apostle Paul writes about the hardships, imprisonment, riots, and beatings that he and his travel, traveling companions have endured. Do you see the common thread here? Chaos. 
It's everywhere. It's everywhere now. It was everywhere then. Our reading, open, our reading from Mark opens with Jesus, exhausted and weary, after a long day of teaching and interacting with huge crowds of people who gathered to hear him. Here we see a glimpse of the Incarnation, Jesus fully divine and fully human. For we read in Philippians, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And because he was human, Jesus got tired. I don't know about you, but something about hearing that gives me hope. Jesus needed rest. Jesus was not simply God masquerading as human. He was human. God became one of us. Earlier in this chapter, it says that Jesus was already in a boat out on the water, teaching those around him. This intrigued me. Why would someone preach from a boat? I never really thought about it before, so I did what anyone these days would do. I googled it. The explanation, according to Jesuit priest James Martin, is that sound travels quite easily over water. And on the shores of Galilee, by Capernaum, there is a naturally occurring amphitheater where the acoustics would have also made it easier for people to hear Jesus. So in other words, they used physics. It's also quite likely that as the crowd grew along the beach, Jesus had only so far to move back before he was in the water. Getting in a boat makes sense. It also serves as a fast getaway. Verse 36 says, And leaving the crowd behind, they, the disciples, took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Just as he was. I had never read that part before or paid much attention to it. This little phrase confirms that it was a quick getaway. There was no stopping for provisions or heading back into the shore to shake hands or hug people goodbye. It was time to go. However, their destination on the other side might prove difficult once they arrived. In a sermon on this passage, writer Reverend Martha Spong describes the scene this way. At the end of an exhausting day of preaching and teaching, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples, trying to get away from a crowd of people. Have you ever had that feeling before? He was so ready for a break that he suggested going across the lake to the other side, even though that was Gentile territory, a potentially hostile destination. So that, going across was more um, appetizing than staying there. He was so tired that he fell sound asleep on a cushion in the stern of the boat, so tired that even the storm blowing up around them and whipping the waves to a terrifying height did not wake him. Enter the chaos. At this point, when the major storm blows up and waves are crashing to the boat and the boat is taking on water, The disciples are terrified. This fact also surprised me somewhat because a few of the disciples were professional fishermen. Surely they had experienced storms before, and they knew how to handle a boat. Couldn't they have calmed the others so that Jesus could continue sleeping? But instead they rush to Jesus, wake him up, and cry out, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Immediately, Jesus gets up and says, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and the waters became calm. In fact, a dead calm. Here, Jesus asks two questions that must have taken the wind out of the disciples as well. Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? 
It is in these two simple questions that Jesus disciples the disciples. He could have reminded them of the stories of God's deliverance and care for the people of Israel in generations past. However, Jesus' previous and present actions demonstrated his love for them. They had been with him, saw him perform miracles, engaged those who were considered the other, and taught the crowds about the kingdom of God. No explanation was needed. Jesus cared for them. It was a given. But Jesus addresses their fear and how it relates to their faith. When will they understand that Jesus is more than what they have come to believe so far? And how will that understanding impact their lives? In her sermon, Reverend Spong later asks this question, What would it mean to acknowledge that the one we follow is not just an effective teacher or a spiritual boyfriend or a moral exemplar? What commitment would it require to claim that the one we follow is actually God? What commitment would it require to claim that the one we follow is actually God? Why are we afraid when the one we follow is actually God? The one part of the lectionary I didn't mention in my introduction was today's reading from the book of Psalms, Psalm 9. Hear these words of assurance in verses 7 through 10. But the Lord rules forever. He assumes his throne for the sake of justice. He will establish justice in the world rightly. He will judge all people fairly. The Lord is a safe place for the oppressed a safe place in difficult times. Those who know, you by, who know your name trust you because you have not abandoned any who seek you, Lord. So here we are today, disciples of Jesus Christ in 2018 in Bothell, Washington. There's no doubt that chaos continues to be all around us. Our local church has gone through some significant leadership changes Several of our families and individuals in our congregation are relocating this summer, starting new jobs, facing unexpected illness, addiction, depression, loneliness. The United Methodist Church is facing challenges across the denomination that may alter our our identity after a special session of the General Conference is held in February 2019. Every day in the news, we read about shootings, violence, natural disasters, political unrest, wars, human trafficking, the immigration crisis. I could go on and on. Chaos is everywhere. And because we are human, we may question from time to time. We will most likely be afraid from time to time. We may cry out, do you not care that we are perishing? But after diving deeper into this storm story, we can stand firm on the fact that God exists, God cares, and that God's faithfulness never wavers. God is able to say, peace, be still. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness. 